Hey, my realist friends around the world, it's May 25th. I couldn't resist. Even after yesterday's publish regarding the Wired article I read from start to finish, I came across a few articles today which illustrate the schizophrenia and just pure confusion as a result of the culture war, which is completely unnecessary, right? And that hope is useless where we're going. I'm done trying to tell people or convince anyone because this is where we're at. This is the headlines that are featured on our little glowing screens we wake up to each day. Do humans cause climate change even now? May 25th, 2023, only half of Americans say yes. All right. That finding from a new Ipsos poll illuminates a yawning gap between public opinion and science on perhaps the most scientific important question of our time, 49% of Americans believe climate change is caused mostly by human actions, the lowest share reported in several years of polling. In other words, a narrow majority of the country disagrees with the nation's scientists, nearly all of whom are certain that humans cause global warming. In parentheses, we are now officially in the dark ages. 27% of Americans say climate change is natural. 7% say it isn't changing, and most other respondents say they aren't even sure. Okay? The disconnect between popular opinion and scientific fact on global warming stems from age-old partisan divide, except that virtually all climate science is on one side of the issue because they're actually looking at the evidence says a distinguished professor and director of Center for Climate Change Communication at George Mason University. The other side of the issue is driven essentially by fossil fuel industry and their friends in the conservative media and their friends in conservative politics. A sizable share of the nation, however, has not been swayed. A respective climate change poll conducted by Yale and George Mason universities in December found that 70% of Americans believe in global warming. 16% said they did not. The same poll reports 58% of Americans believe global warming is caused mostly by human activity. So you have millions of clueless morons driving on the roads with us, filling their Slurpees, watching the Kardashians and John Wick, which was an awesome movie, by the way. And very few of us take the time or even know how to look at the original research to see what truth is. Okay? And so you have me. With over th- just over a thousand subscribers on YouTube telling the truth. If you don't want to believe in this because you're in that ideological and media o- ecosystem, then you won't. Period. The more I read this, it's very unfortunate that our climate has become a victim of the culture wars because our climate doesn't care whether we're liberal or conservative. All right, so despite knowing this, This is why I don't think I can really work with normal people ever again, okay? I don't, I think I will be working alone for the rest of this decade. As the military must focus on short and long-term challenges of climate change report finds. So a new RAND Corp study finds, maps out the, the various ways climate change will impact the military's personnel, equipment, facilities, supply chain, ability to engage with its allies and partners. And yes, they're correct. If we run out of fossil fuels to keep this giant system going, then they stop, then we stop. Okay? And climate change is making it worse. This is a flood waters outside of Air Force Base. So we have climate threats while we're trying to initiate war. Is this not a dystopian hell? Are we in hell yet? Because half of Phoenix, Arizona would end up in the ER if the city has a blackout during a heat wave study finds. Imagine that. Imagine half of Phoenix without the Colorado River would go to the ER if there's a blackout. 800,000 people would require emergency care for heat-related illnesses and 13,000 would die. Minimum. Minimum. Where would we get the power? Furthermore, Current climate path will lead to collapse of life on Earth. This headline from Yahoo News UK. Failing to limit the global temperature to 1.5. Too late. We've already passed it. 
could trigger tipping points and lead to collapse of all life on Earth, two scientists have warned. At the opening of Innovation Zero Congress in London, Professor Johan Rockström and David King said our current path will lead us to certain disaster, destroying rainforests and marine life and making vast areas of the tropics uninhabitable for humans. It has already warmed 1.2 according to the WMO, and there is a two-third chance of recording 1.5 in the next five years. Although for now, only temporary, but not soon after, permanent. We'll be in a completely different... We already are in a different planet from pre-industrial times. David Wallace Wells, we are going into a hell world completely unlike we've ever lived in before by 2030. Because... It's something that humanity has absolutely no evidence that we can cope with. We're heading for its 2.5C, but we all know. We all know that it's way higher. There would be a collapse of all biomes on planet Earth. The rainforest, many of the temperate rainforests, abrupting thaw and permafrost. We'd have complete collapse of marine biology. We will have a shift in large parts, parts of habitability of the planet. Over one third of the planet around, over one third of the planet around the Equatorial regions will be uninhabitable because you will pass the threshold of health, which is around 30 C. So in summary, it's a place we do not want to go. The problem is we're following that path today. Dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops have already been passed, but he also said that Earth's natural system to behave after 1.5 is unknown and that it will likely trigger five tipping points over and over. Three of these tipping points are in the Arctic, which would heat up Four to f which is heating up four to five times faster than the rest of the Earth. The five other tipping points are melting of West Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets, melting of permafrost, mass die-off of coral reefs, and melting sea ice in the Bering Sea would tip our planet into absolute nightmare. But you see here, these people at Innovation Zero, you know, they're really coming up with the plans. They really have an idea for it. Today, we're the ones causing the warming, but the nightmare is, of course, the moment the planet itself starts to causing warming, and that's what we, under all circumstances, we have to avoid. He added that 1.5 target is a must. If we don't stay below that, frankly, the talk about going up to 2C, bringing the temperature down by removing greenhouse gases, that is not good enough. Too many people will die in a period when we allow the temperature to go up. And we actually have a poll where we think that animals, trees, and rivers should have legal rights. I mean, we're actually voting on this. Just goes to show you how disconnected we are. And I'm not going to read this, but I just want to highlight a portion of El Nino being coming back. El, no El Nino is coming back. What does that mean for already overheated California? Well, the macroeconomic toll of El Nino, the global price tags of 1983 and 1998 El Nino events, are orders of magnitude higher than earlier estimates suggest, amounting to nearly 4.1 trillion and 5. Point trillion, respectively. It's all connected. It's all tied together. Climate change, health, the planet, Bezos, $500 million super yacht, and engaged to his plastic face fiance, who he's going to divorce soon, probably. It's all connected, okay? We're toast. Thank you, Andre. Thank you to all my subscribers. This has been a journey, and it isn't over. The ride never ends. I'll talk to you soon.